prior to being able to do all of the, the deep dive and automation that I've been doing in processes, I was a technical account manager. So I spent a lot of time around like trying to make our clients happy and ensuring that we were only billing them for what we wanted to bill them for. And uh, the joy that is newcomers experience created some really fun wrinkles to doing that. Um, so I built this workflow here that pulls Pax8 every day for upcoming expiring new commerce experience um, commits and checks to see if there are any unused licenses and makes adjustments if necessary. So it's, it's another fairly straightforward one. I had to set some exclusions. I forget what I have in this exclusion list because in my infinite wisdom, I didn't document it very well. But again, that was like one of my first workflows. So I'm going to go back on V3 and figure out what all these were and include some better commenting around why I have this list because I don't know what it is. Um, but then it runs through and gets all of the subscriptions from Pax8. It does some date filtering because of how Pax8's platform will only let you make changes like two days in advance on NCE. Otherwise, it bombs it out. Um, schedule the ones it all overwrites and all kinds of weird funny stuff with that that I had to kind of get around and, and learn about. Um, and then I had this action for getting Microsoft, all Microsoft subscriptions, and then everything is fed into this sub workflow that grabs the lookup table, converts the friendly name, um, gets the the current subscription information, sets the, the quantity variables, and then does some comparison. And if it needs to update, it updates. If not, it ends the workflow. Um, and at various different points, it sets an output. So on this one, it's no update needed. Uh, here it was successful. Here it said it failed. That all gets passed back to the parent workflow since it'll do a four items on each subscription and creates a service ticket in ConnectWise with some Jinja that outputs a list that looks like that. Um, in this case, it the ticket I remembered 30 seconds ago when uh, I forgot I told Ash I was doing this, uh, I was able to grab quickly and, and this is the one that it's doing. Look at that too. Um, you can see this one didn't require an update, but I've got another one somewhere in there where it, it was like a whole list of this one required an update. Um, it grabs an error. Uh, sometimes it'll error. Uh, there is an error code returned. So version three is also going to include pulling that error, uh, the error response through and putting it into the ticket. Uh, and then also including some more beefier information that gets dropped onto the ticket around, you know, how many licenses are in uh, Microsoft and when the next renewal is in case they were ones that uh, action couldn't be taken on that way. Whoever reviews the ticket uh, can take a look at it and, and see what uh, what all happened. Nice. So a sort of enhancement, um, are you working on like actively? Yeah, um, was <laughs> I was in the middle of trying to figure out some of that earlier today because um, one of the things I want to do is I want to build out more about this because we do, at least for the time being, still have a fair amount of nonprofit and gov and education clients that are not on new commerce experience yet. Um, and because of the, we've trained our tech so well at just not touching licensing because it's all handled by a workflow. Uh, that is one thing that we, we did find is that they're forgetting that that doesn't apply to those just yet. Now, uh, with all of those going to new commerce experience, I want to build the workflow in a way that it will still do all of this, but it'll also grab all of those um, nonprofit or gov or any of those that don't have like a commitment term date 
and do the same process of getting its current subscription count, seeing if it, any of them are unused, and then making an adjustment in PAX 8. It's going to require a bit more complex stuff because of the way that data gets returned with um, this list subscriptions. If you've played with it ever before, it just returns a subscription GUID. Uh, there's no friendly name or anything like that that comes from PAX 8, which is part of why that sub workflow has to do some naming lookup. Uh, so I can't have it just flat out look for, well, okay, is there a commitment term? Because that could also be the licenses that aren't Microsoft. If you we buy, like, we, we purchase um, spam filter through PAX 8, or um, I don't necessarily care about going and looking for the subscription that's Azure. Um, and a lot of those are probably what all of my ignored subscriptions are for. And that, that's 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 the biggest part of this. I want to make it a, a more complete licensing, ongoing licensing audit to ensure that we're truing everything up that can be trued up. And then another one is a very weird wrinkle is we do have a couple of clients that for whatever reason decided they wanted some monthly uh, term and some annual term. And so being able to have it add the two together and make the adjustments, that'll be something else I have to try to figure out. Because if I don't, it tries to update both of them, which doubles the amount of licenses they have and fun stuff. 